Hello, welcome to a discussion on number theory. In this particular talk, we will discuss number theoretic functions. Um, this particular function that we will talk about is known as tau. Uh, it's a Greek letter. It's sort of written like this. So, tau of n, where n is a positive integer. Now, you may think of a function as an input output machine. So, if you think of the function, the tau function as an input output machine, then it takes in positive integers and gives out the number of divisor of the input the number of divisors or factors of the input. So, let us take one concrete example. Suppose n is equals to 20. So, what is tau of n or what is tau of 20? So, we can actually um, count it uh, without going into any formula oriented treatment. We can directly count the number of divisors of 20. So, 1 uh, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. So, there are 6 of them. So, tau of 20 is 6. Of course, we need a formula for this kind of computation, but um, for small numbers, we can directly count them as we did it right now. So, tau of 20 is 6 and similarly, we will have tau of some other numbers. Um, and we want to know how to compute tau of any number. That is one of, one of the things that we are interested in. However, before we go that, let us observe an interesting pattern. If, if you look into the way I wrote down the divisors of 20, you can immediately see something very interesting going on. See, they are in pairs the divisors, they are in pairs. That is, for 1, you have the corresponding number 20 and their product is 20, of course. For 2, we have 10. Again, the product of those two are 20. For 4, I have 5, so such that the product is 20. So, each divisor has its corresponding pair and this is obviously true for any particular number n. Why? Because in the abstract setting, suppose we have a natural number n and we have a divisor of n d. So, if suppose d divides n. Clearly, then n by d also divides n, right? Because n divided by n by d is d. So, we can pair d with n by d. So, each divisor will have its unique pair partner. Now, it might so happen that these two numbers are actually same. That is, in the case of 20 it did not happen, each pair partner were distinct, they were different. But could it happen that d and n by d are same? Well, it can. If we set d equals to n over d, then we will have n equals to d square, which immediately tells us that n is a perfect square. So, in the case of perfect square, in the case of perfect square, one pair will be non-distinct members, will be made out of non-distinct members. Created by all other pairs will have distinct members. So, let me illustrate that by an example. Suppose n is 36 
then if I pair them 1 36 2 18 3 12 4 9 6 6 so see each of the pairs have distinct members except the last one which contains non-distinct members so this particular observation the pairing observation actually tells us a very interesting fact about tau of n and it leads to this theorem which says that tau of n is odd if and only if n is a perfect square. Now try to comprehend the beauty of this number theoretic function, the power of it. I mean even if you do not know what n is, if you know something about tau of n, not even the actual value of tau of n, if you know the parity of tau of n, whether it is even or odd, you can tell something very interesting about the number itself. And that is the precise use of these number theoretic functions. They are sort of used as signatures. So that is how I like to think about it. When they are sort of signatures or classifications of natural numbers. And um, for example, the signature of perfect squares, one of the signatures of perfect squares is their tau would be odd. Uh, in the next uh, video, we will talk about a formula to compute tau of n directly and um, see some more applications of number theoretic functions in the subsequent videos. Thank you for watching.